combining random variables. So last week was we had one single variable and we manipulated that variable, either multiplying it or adding to it or subtracting from it and seeing what happened to our distribution. Now we're going to talk about what happens if we have multiple random variables that we want to put together. So maybe we want to find the sum of two random variables or we want to find the difference between the two random variables. So we need to figure out what happens when we do that. So if we take random variables and we want to combine them either through addition or subtraction. So we want to find the sum or we want to find the difference. So in this case I have two random variables x and y. I want to add or subtract my variables. So if I want to combine the random variables and find the new expected value, all I need to do is take the expected value of x alone, take the expected value of y alone, and then simply add or subtract them. So when we combine random variables like this with addition or subtraction, all you need to do is find each individual mean and then add or subtract them together based on what you're trying to do with them. Okay, so mean of one plus the mean of the other, or mean of one minus the mean of the other, depending on what you're looking at. Now, when we start talking about standard deviation, so our two main concerns with our random variables are usually mean and standard deviation. What's our expected value and then how much do we expect to vary around that center? So a couple quick things on this one. First, standard deviations do not add or subtract. You cannot take the standard deviation of one variable plus or minus the standard deviation of the other. It doesn't work that way. So if you want to combine random variables, you have to take your standard deviations and convert them to variance. Okay. So when we look at two independent random variables, that's the second main key here. The two variables in question must be independent. You need to highlight that, star it, write it again in the notes, whatever you need to do to make sure that that stands out. The two variables must be independent of one another. Most of the time in the question they'll say something to the effect that the two variables are independent. Otherwise, you need to kind of think to yourself what it means to be independent. One thing is not going to affect the other, right? So then you have to use your judgment on whether you believe the variables are independent or not. If they are independent, then you can use this formula. If for any reason you would say that they are not independent, so if you can justify the fact that one depends on the other, then you cannot add or subtract your variances. They don't combine in the normal manner. So two big things when dealing with combining random variables. The means act exactly like we would expect. Take the mean of one plus or minus the mean of the other. But standard deviations are much trickier. First, we cannot add standard deviations. All we can do is work with variances. So every standard deviation you get, you need to convert to variance. Then you can combine them together. Okay? Now. Independence is the second main thing. You have to make sure that the two variables that you're working with, or two or more variables that you're working with, are independent of one another. The last thing, notice, if we take the sum or the difference of my two random variables, so x plus or minus y, what's happening with my variances? They are always added. That is something else you might want to highlight in your formula there. It does not matter if we take x plus y or x minus y. Variances always add. So variance of one plus the variance of the other. Okay. 
Now, when you calculate the variance like this, so once I take the variance of x plus the variance of y, is that going to be my final answer? No. That tells me what the variance for x plus y is. So once I take variance of x plus variance of y, what am I going to have to end up doing? Take the square root. I have variance, but I want standard deviation, so I need to take the square root and find my actual standard deviation. Okay? So lots of things happening with this formula. You've got to be very careful with it. Whether you add or subtract, variance is always add. Once you have your variance, take the square root, you get your standard deviation. And you can never, ever add standard deviations. You have to convert to variance first, then convert back. Wait, so how do you know when to subtract that? It'll tell you in the problem. Okay. So the, the problem will say, we have these two random variables, what would be the sum, or what would be the difference, or something that, that leads you to one or the other. And so then you simply follow whatever path you need to from there. All right, now, something to be aware of. When you are combining random variables, so what might happen is we might not have two completely separate random variables, x and y. What we might do is have the same random variable that we want to combine multiple times. For instance, when we insure uh, insurance companies, they write one policy. Now, when they give that policy out, they give it to multiple people, right? It's the same policy, just different people. So this X1 might be the insurance for one person, plus X2, the insurance for the second person, plus X3, the insurance for the third person, and so on. Now, from algebra and years and years of working with variables in your math classes, when you guys see variables repeated, X plus X plus X, okay, our natural inclination is to combine those with multiplication and say that that's equal to 3x. That is not the case here. Okay. Now if we think about this, if I take the mean of x plus the mean of x again plus the mean of x again, what would I end up getting? So let's say my mean was 2 originally. Okay, so I have a random variable, my expected value is 2, now I want to take three separate iterations of that random variable. So I want an x1 plus x2 plus x3. So my formula says, take the mean of the first variable plus the mean of the second variable plus the mean of the third variable, right? So if I do 2 plus 2 plus 2, I get 6. Well, 6 is... 3 times 2, correct? So why can't we just use this formula? If I'm going to combine the same variable over and over again, why can't I just write that as 3x and not x plus x plus x? Sam? Well, in this case, they're, they're actually going to be the exact same. So it, when we're looking at this, they are for different people, but the policy is exactly the same for all three people. So the variable isn't changing from x1 to x2 to x3. So why would we have to be careful with not writing 3 times x? Um, not necessarily. No, I'm not going to subtract. Is it because, like, when you're, like, then writing it to find, like, the probability, I guess, then it's, like, for this one, you, like, couldn't find the standard deviation, but if you wrote it 3x, then you could? You're on, on the right track. It has to do with standard deviation. When I combine my random variables, okay, so let's think about this. If I did x plus x plus x, okay, <laughs> if I were to find the standard deviation for x plus x plus x, what would I have to do? Mm 
convert to variance, right? If I wanted to calculate the standard deviation of an x plus x plus x, I would need to convert to variance. So I would take the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2 plus the variance of x3. Now, we just talked about the fact that x1, x2, and x3 are all the same value. It's the same variable at all three times. Right? Now, what I'm looking at here is this formula. In order to combine random variables, I have to add variances. Okay? So if I was going to calculate my standard deviation, I would need to take variance plus variance plus variance, right? Now these three variances should all be identical, correct? So is everyone okay if I do this? If I take one variance plus the same variance plus the same variance, we can agree that that's the same as three times the variance, right? But remember, standard deviation is the square root of that variance. So if I'm looking at this, the standard deviation of x1 plus x2 plus x3 would be equal to the square root of 3 times the standard deviation of x. Over here, if I wanted to calculate the standard deviation of 3x, all I'd have to do is 3 times the original standard deviation. Does this 3 standard deviation match this? No, it doesn't. This one's square root of 3 times standard deviation. This one is the full 3 times standard deviation. So when you're combining random variables, even if we're doing the same variable over and over again. We cannot get lulled into the trap that that is the same thing as taking 3 times x. This 3 times x means something completely different than three separate random variables being combined. And where that causes problems is right here when we calculate standard deviation. Because we can't add standard deviations, we have to first convert to variance and then come back to standard deviation. We end up with this radical that throws things off. So when you're doing these problems, even if you're doing the same variable over and over again, don't get caught up in the trap that that is the same thing as three times the value of the variable. Okay. Now, there are some shortcuts you can use on these. Okay. So if I do have x plus x plus x, okay, so if I want the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus x3, well, if I take the mean of x plus the mean of x plus the mean of x, that's just 3 times the mean of x, right? So that is one you can just do straight up. The problem is with your standard deviation. Okay? With standard deviation, this would be equal to the square root of 3 times the variance. When I convert to variance, variance of x plus variance of x plus variance of x. They're all three the same variance, so that can be three times the variance of x. But then I have to remember to take the square root of that three times the variance. Okay, so don't get caught up in the trap that adding the same variable over and over again is the same as multiplying by a constant. Those are two separate ideas. And where they end up messing up is with standard deviation, because we account for standard deviation differently depending on the two scenarios. 
Okay. What I would highly suggest you guys do, if this is still kind of confusing to you, is go to page 375 sometime tonight or later on today and just look through their explanation. They do a really good job of going through it with an example and everything. This is why this doesn't work the way we want it to. Okay? So definitely check that out if you want further explanation there. So let's do a couple examples working with combining random variables so you guys can kind of see how this works. So Friday, when we're talking about our linear transformations, we're talking about Pete's Jeep tour. So we're going to continue with that idea here. So Pete's sister, Erin, who lives near a tourist area in another part of the country, is impressed by the success of Pete's business. She decides to run tours on the same days as Pete in her slightly smaller vehicle. Erin discovers that the number of passengers on her tour or on her tours follows the probability distribution below in orange. So Pete's tours, we define with the variable X. So his are in blue here. He has a six passenger vehicle. Hers are in orange. And she's going to be defined with the letter Y. So last week we calculated Pete's mean and standard deviation. So he, on any random or any randomly selected day, can expect to have 3.75 passengers with a standard deviation of 1.090 passengers. Now, if we look at Aaron's information, based on her probability distribution, so she can have at least two, but at most five with her slightly smaller vehicle. So on any given day, she can expect to have 3.1 passengers with a standard deviation of 0.943 passengers. Okay. So we're looking at their means and standard deviations here. Now, if we wanted to know how many total passengers Pete and Aaron could have on a given day, and with what standard deviation, what would we need to do here? So now we're defining a brand new variable, T. What is T? T is X plus Y. Pete's values plus Aaron's values, right? So we define our new variable T as X plus Y. So we want to know how many total passengers will Pete and Aaron have on a randomly selected day. What we're asking is, what's the expected value for T? Okay. So if I want the expected value for T, that means I need to take random variable X plus random variable Y. What did our formula say we can do with the means then? Okay. Add them up. If I want to do X plus Y, I can simply take the expected value for X plus the expected value for Y. So I can take his mean, 3.75, plus her mean, 3.10, and what do we get for the total number of passengers? Six point eight five. So between the two of them, on any randomly selected day, they can expect to have six point eight five passengers. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Now the second part of the question: with what standard deviation? So if I want to calculate the standard deviation for variable t, what do I need to do? Okay. If I want to calculate the standard deviation, what do I need to do first? Work with variance. I have to convert to variance. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, if I want standard deviation, I'm going to take the variance of x plus the variance of y. Now, if I add these variances together, that gives me a variance, which means I then need to square root it. So if you want to calculate standard deviation, this is this pretty standard formula you can use here. Okay, variance of x plus variance of y, and then square root. So 
his standard deviation was 1.090. How would I calculate his variance? Square. square that. So take 1.09 squared plus her value, 0.943 squared, and then take the square root of that <coughs> result. So 1.090 squared plus 0.943 squared, and then take the square root of that result. 1.44. 1.44? Okay, so between the two of their tours on any random or randomly selected day, they can expect 6.85 passengers with a standard deviation of 1.44 passengers. Everyone okay with that? Okay, what if we change this question up to know on average how many more passengers Pete could expect on a given day than Aaron? Now we would want to subtract. We would take Pete's mean or Pete's values minus Aaron's values. And that would tell us how many more he would expect to have than she would, right? So in this case, we'd be defining a completely different variable. What do we want to call it? Z. So let's call it Z. And Z is going to be defined by taking X minus Y. So I want to take his values minus hers. So as far as the expected difference goes, what would I need to do? Yeah. Subtract their individual means. So take 3.75 minus 3.10. So we get an expected value of 0.65. What about my standard deviation? <coughs> It'd be the exact same as what we just calculated in the previous problem. So, first problem was x plus y. This problem is x minus y. Now, the means are going to change based on whether we're doing plus or minus. But standard deviation does not change regardless of whether we added the variables or whether we subtracted the variables because we always add variances. So, in this case, I wouldn't even have to do any calculations if I remembered what our last standard deviation was, which in this case was 1.44. So whether we do x plus y or x minus y, the standard deviations come out to be identical each time. Why we add? Um, the, the book goes into a little bit of that too, but the long story short is uh, part of it has to do with the fact that we're taking the square root. And if we do differences, there's a chance we can get negatives, which then leads us into complex values. So we can't really have that subtraction. And plus, uh, just kind of working with these formulas over and over, they just discovered that even when you subtract the variables, the variances still come out to add for the deviations. So kind of a real short version there. But the book goes into it a little bit more why they add all these. So if you wanted to, you could check that. We okay with that idea then? Okay. So let's talk about this one. College uses SAT scores as one criterion for admission. Experience has shown that the distribution of SAT scores among its entire population is such that the math score, X, has a mean of 519 and a standard deviation of 115. The critical reading score, Y, has a mean of 507 and a standard deviation of 111. We want to know what the mean and standard deviation of the total score, X plus Y, for a randomly selected applicant to this college. So if we took a randomly selected applicant, what would their total score of the two sections be? 
So what would we do to calculate our mean for the total score? Add the means for the math and critical reading. So take 519 plus 507 and get 1026. Okay. What about the standard deviation? Okay, square both of them, add them together, take the square root. Does everybody agree with that? Anybody have any reservations about that? So look back in your notes a little ways. In order to add variances, what has to be true? The variables have to be independent, correct? Now, when we're looking at these math scores and critical reading scores, these are for one person taking both tests, correct? Now, if you think about that, if someone typically does well on the math, what's probably going to happen on their critical reading score? They're probably going to do fairly well on that, too. Kids who tend to do well on these tests tend to do well on all the parts, right? So, when we look at this, our two random variables are not completely independent of one another. Now, the means can still be added regardless. So there, we can still add the means and calculate the mean score for that one randomly selected applicant. However, because the math scores and the critical reading scores are not independent of one another, one person's taking both, and one person who does well on the one is probably going to do fairly well on the other, we cannot calculate our standard deviation using the formula set forth earlier. So on a problem like this, you would be expected to calculate the mean, but you would then say something to the effect that the variables are not independent, which means we can't calculate standard deviation. Is everyone okay with that? All right, now, had these been independent, then yes, you guys have the right idea. Square both standard deviations, add them together, take the square root, okay? But always be aware of whether your variables are independent or not, because that makes a huge difference as far as what we can and cannot do. Okay, one last example. We did a couple discrete samples there. Now we're going to talk about continuous sample. So a company packs and boxes stereos for distribution. The times required to pack the stereos can be described by a normal model with a mean of 9 minutes and a standard deviation of 1.5 minutes. The boxing process can also be modeled with a normal model with a mean of 6 minutes and a standard deviation of 1 minute. What is the probability that packing two consecutive systems takes over 20 minutes? Okay, so in the question, we have two different distributions described to us. We have the packing process, which has a normal model with a mean of 9 minutes and a standard deviation of 1.5 minutes. And we have the boxing process, which has a normal model with a mean of 6 minutes and a standard deviation of 1 minute. Now, if we look at the question, it says, what's the probability that packing, so packing two consecutive systems takes over 20 minutes? So what's happening here? What are they asking us to do? So you want to do it as two separate problems overall? Well, is it asking me to like two normals in a row or like one normal and one, uh, one of the other ones? Well, in this case, it's just simply saying we're going to pack two systems in a row. So we're going to pack one and then pack another. What we want to know is if we do that one following the next, what's the probability that we end up spending more than 20 minutes during the process? Okay. 
So you're on the right track. Uh, in this case, since they're actually just simply they're asking about hacking two consecutive systems, we don't have to worry about the boxing at all. The boxing right now is just extra information we don't need. So all we're looking at is the total packing time for two systems, right? So we can define a third variable here, call it T. That would be the packing process for two different systems. So let P1 equal the time for packing the first system, P2 packing the second system. So we're going to define a second variable T, which is the total time to pack both systems. So basically we're thinking of this as one variable packing one system plus a second variable packing the second system. Okay. Now, if we want to calculate the probability like they're asking us to do, we know that individually the packing follows a normal model. So if I were to add my two variables together, if I take one normal model plus another normal model, what should happen? You get another normal model. So T, the one we just defined, should also follow a normal model, but now we have to redefine the mean and standard deviation. The time for one system takes nine minutes with the standard deviation of 1.5 minutes, but now we're looking at a normal model that requir or requires two systems to be packed simultaneously, or uh, consecutively, sorry. So two systems packed or consecutively. So in order to work this through, we need to redefine our problem in terms of T. So we need to figure out the expected value for T, and we need to find the standard deviation for T. So how would I calculate the mean of T? Just add the two means that we know. The mean for packing system one should be nine minutes. The mean for packing system two should be nine minutes. So my total expected mean would be 18 minutes. So for the mean, straightforward. Take the mean from one plus the mean of the other. Nine plus nine gives us 18 minutes. For standard deviation, what are we going to need to do? So variance plus variance, square root. So in this case, our standard deviations were 1.5, so 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared. And then when we take the square root of that, we get our new standard deviation. So the standard deviation for packing two consecutive systems would be 2.12 minutes. So what we've done so far is we have calculated the mean and standard deviation for our normal distribution. The question, however, asks us to find the probability that packing two systems takes longer than 20 minutes. So, because we're dealing with a continuous random variable, a normally distributed variable, we need to work with z-scores. So our next step in the process, once we know the mean and standard deviation, is to find our z-score associated with 20 minutes. So when we calculate z-scores, we take the value in question, in this case 20, minus the mean of our distribution, 18, divided by the standard deviation of our distribution, 2.12. So we get a z-score of 0.94. And on a graph, once we have our normal distribution, we would move almost one standard deviation above the mean, and then simply shade everything to the right. We're looking for greater than 20. So, once I know what my z-score is, what would be my next step? Look it up on table A. Once I get the value from table A, what would I need to do with it? Subtract it from 1. Okay. So, when I want the probability that the time to pack two boxes is greater than 20, 
I need to calculate the probability that Z is greater than 0.94, which on a table would be, look up the value, subtract from 1, we get 0.1736. So if you were to actually perform that process of looking on the table, this should be the value you get. So what does this 0.1736 actually mean? Yeah, essentially there's about a 17% chance that packing two or systems consecutively will take longer than 20 minutes. Okay? So there's a little more than a 17% chance it'll take over 20 minutes to pack two consecutive stereo systems. So remember, anytime you're working with these probabilities and normal distributions, once you get your final value, you need to relate it back to context. You need to have a statement that says what that means. Okay there? All right. So here's your assignments. 